We have got football in focus set to go again at Shane's Rib Shack for another Thursday night. And going to talk about college football and high school football, mainly high school in the next part of the show. But college football first, Matt Johnson with us. He is a play-by-play -play man for the Avery to Cougars up in Danville, Virginia. He's going to be at the A&T Hampton game tonight covering the Aggies and the Pirates for us for GrantsboroughSports.com. And good to have Matt with us. And again, a lot of people talking about that. There's a lot of buzz about this game tonight. A lot of people, a few people come by Shane's, pick up some food, and take it to the game. Get ready for the game down there tonight. You'll be there in a few minutes checking out the Aggies and the Pirates. And the Aggies all took good two in one start. Yes, sir. And thank you for having me uh, here to join you. And you know, looking at uh, the opening conference game with uh, with uh, Hampton, the Pirates uh, one and zero against uh, in against conference opponents. Started off with Howard last week, as you mentioned, um, one and two overall. You got to look for this team to gather momentum heading into the conference stretch of the schedule, because really, you know, the out of conference games matter. But the what's going to get you into the postseason is going to be the conference games, and uh, there's always a little more emphasis, a little more familiarity between the players and the coaching staff. Um, it's always something to look forward to. A lot of spotlight to in this game, a Thursday night game. Not everybody playing, just a few select teams play on Thursday night. This game's mm -hmm. going to be on TV. So a big feature, marquee matchup for A&T going against Hampton. Hampton coached by Connell Maynor, who quarterbacked at A&T several years ago. Also was a quarterback at West Salem State. Also coached at West Salem State. One time, Connell Maynor felt like he would be the next coach at A&T. It never worked out, and I'm sure he's not worried about that much. He's got to focus on Hampton now. But at one time, he was in line to be the next coach at A&T. All thought it might come together, but again, uh, Coach Broadway's come in. Rod Broadway's come in. He's done a great job at A&T. I think his overall coaching record, 13 years, something like 105 and 41. Anytime you've got like less than 50 losses, more than 100 wins, <laughs> says a lot for what the guy's doing. He's got these guys going the right way at uh, A&T, the right mindset over there now. Definitely, and it, I believe it's a third straight week for A&T um, on an ESPN network. Uh, so a very big spotlight for them to here to start the season and, and really getting a lot of good publicity, especially with a big Kent State win and three overtimes. Really got this program heading in the right direction and uh, another number uh, to look at for Coach Rod Broadway. Three straight victories so far in his past three years uh, coming off the bye week. Um, so getting that extra preparation has definitely seemed to work out for him and his squad. Definitely something to look forward to here tonight coming off a bye week after a loss to Tulsa. And uh, what are you expecting out of this game tonight? Who do you expect to dominate? What do you expect to see when you get after? What kind of game do you expect? I mean, you talked earlier in our pregame discussion before we got rolling our broadcast about the fact, speaking about Rod Broadway in the broadcast, talking about the fact that maybe this Hampton team may have trouble getting inside against a ts offensive line. a and has got a very big uh, front five, um, a very experienced group of guys, uh, four juniors, one senior, um, a big left tackle. And Hampton's only gotten three sacks all season. I look for the front seven of Hampton to, to, to struggle against an offensive line. they got a rotating quarterback situation. Um, Kyle Carter injured. We spoke about that in the pregame. Uh, but if the front five can do their job, and including if they bring in too tight or one tight end, however they would like to do it, backs out of the backfield. If they can protect the quarterback, it will be a fluid situation anyway. Uh, if everybody can keep their composure and work around uh, the system, it, it should be fine. I, I really look forward to seeing this matchup up front. Uh, you, anytime you got a good offensive line, you expect to keep the quarterback upright, get some chunk yardage on the ground, and uh, this is a front seven for Hampton. As we mentioned, three sacks um, in three games, definitely not something uh, they're happy with. And the pass rush may not play in the point as much as it possibly would because A&T doesn't have to rely as much on their passing with uh, Lamar Reynard out of Hopwood Andrews to start a quarterback the schedule start tonight. And then uh, the young man who did so well at uh, Kent State, Femi Bamari, he's set to come in as a backup. But you look at uh, the A&T offense, Tariq Cohen, if he's rolling, they're going to run that ball all night long if they need to. They'll run it. And they don't worry about the pass. They'll use the pass to set up the run. Oh, yeah. And if he gets rolling, look for it to be a downhill game for him. I mean, anytime you can get a running back to go north-south and uh, get those chunk yardage plays, I really look for him to be, be a breakout performer. I mean, not really a breakout performer. He's had a fantastic start to the year. But I definitely look for him to get behind that big offensive line. We should get a good push and get some chunk yardage plays, uh, set up some second and shorts um, on those first and tens. And a &T. Uh, tends to be sometimes that run not necessarily a grind. They like to be the big play yeah. team, the big play, the big run. And, and the key with that is, is you don't want to go for the big play. You want to let that set up around you. Really stay fundamentally sound, uh, do what you're supposed to do, do your job, and then let the big play come as it goes. Uh, the, 
the more technically sound you are, the more likely you are to hit that home run. Just just play the sound, technically sound football game, and let it come to you as a as a gifted athlete. It's gonna be fun for you and others watching that uh, Hampton defense. It's a, a Hampton defense coached by a former Gopher College head mm -hmm. coach Mike Ketchum, who coached at Gopher for several years. He's been at two historically black universities. He was at Winston State with uh, Coach Maynard for several years. Now up at Hampton with him as well. I tell you, and I think he was also at Delaware State. Says so three historically black universities. Coach Ketchum's been at. He coached at Gopher. Had a lot of success there. He's just one of those uh, old-fashioned, in some ways, coaches who just like to coach forever. And he gets on that defense side of the ball. He just uh, knows what he's doing. Knows how to run that defense. And you know, some guys. Uh, there's a lot of talk about coaches uh, in the la later part of their careers. Uh, something they only know how to do for 16 to 18 hours a day is coach football. And uh, some of these guys, there's a lot of jokes about you know big-time superstars Brett Favre having trouble walking away from the game. But it's a real thing. Uh, you get into that grind of a 20-hour workday, but you enjoy it that much. That's a very tough thing to leave. And you look at Ketchum, I mean, he's been with Coach Maynard a couple of times before over with him in Minnesota State. So Coach Maynard is probably feeling pretty good about it. I can take this defense. Not to worry much about getting Coach Ketchum. He'll run the whole show. I can focus on other things. And like uh, Maynard, he was a former quarterback, so you know he loves hanging out with the yeah. offense and working yes. with his quarterbacks. And uh, th that's one of the great things about uh, a former player coach is being able to add uh, their insights as a player from their position into what they do. Uh, just like an offensive lineman being an O-line coach, a running back being a running backs coach, they really can, can I, I, in my opinion, further the nuances um, of the position. And anytime you can add it to that side of the ball as a whole uh, from being a former quarterback, it really adds nothing but more knowledge and experience to your players um, in any circumstance. And all these connections, all these uh, locals and formers around the area, you got another guy, Matt Pulaski, who quarterback to Guilford College, was a great quarterback there. You may have heard his name when you were yes, up sir. in Averitt when he quarterback Guilford several years. He quarterback in the practice last year, last year. Now he's the tight ends coach over at A&T, so he was the former quarterback looking for a job, looking to break in. He's a graduate assistant coach in tight ends, so just a ton of connections out there. Oh, yeah, and, and a great quarterback for Guilford College. And, and you look at what Guilford's done over the years, just completely turning that program into a huge success story. Um, and, and really, just the overhaul in the athletics facilities. Uh, when I started my time at Averett, they had just put in the new uh, workout room uh, right down the street, uh, down that little strip from the football stadium. And you could really see right then and there the progress that was going to happen. And uh, I've, I've spoken with the coaching staff before, and really everybody there, as professional as they come, really represented uh, representing the ODAC very strong. Represented the USA South very well when they were with that uh, with uh, the USA South Conference. Um, and Matt Pulowski, uh really good, really really strong quarterback. A lot of knowledge in the game. Really showed showcased his skills against David a couple times. Uh, very familiar with his name. Uh, it's great to see a, a local guy getting opportunities with big programs and, and taking those uh, steps forward. And you look at Guilford back in the day when Guilford won a football game. Maybe like a day off for the students the following day. Maybe on Monday classes are canceled. They won a game. <laughs> But now when they lose a game, now there is some uh, actually, even though they're a Quaker campus, Quaker uh, system, there is some unrest on the Quaker campus if they lose these days. And in a very close game with Averett in my last broadcast oh, yeah, for the like Cougars. A, what, three point game, two point game? Yes, sir, 30, I believe it was 30 to 28. Yeah, man. And, uh, I'll listen to some of your post game at night because oh, yes. I had to. Well, the problem about, about that game, it stirred me up though. It happens to me sometimes these different sports that get in this. It came at six. I'm used to the seven o'clock yep. start. So I must have chucked. I was going to catch the last part of the game. And I did. I caught the post game for the most part because it went at six instead of seven. But like you said, that was a back and forth game. Guilford fortunate to win that game at your place that night. Oh, yeah. And uh, really everybody uh, showed up on the field. Defense, offense, special teams. There was really everybody was showcased. And especially looking at the Averitt side of things, seeing where that program's come to measure them against Guilford and their quality program that they have down there. Um, just a great night of football overall. Uh, Averett looked like they were going to be able to pull it out. Uh, Kelly Hall coach Cleve Adams really uh, great tandem with coach quarterback uh, coach Anna Johnson, the offensive coordinator for Averett. Really some great offensive football happening down there. The defense has taken steps by leaps and bounds from last year at Averett. And um, Guilford is definitely one of the class teams, especially with the struggles of Hampton Sydney and the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. Uh, so very much a, almost kind of a measuring stick game. Stick game. 
as Avert heads into the conference season coming up this week, uh, they'll be in Georgia uh, against the Grange. Let's look at uh, the A&T game tonight a little bit more, too, in detail. A&T Aggies versus the Hampton Pirates tonight. Hampton University used to go by Hampton Institute back in the day, but now Hampton University. And A&T, we mentioned starting quarterback Lamar Raynard out of High Point Andrews. Backup running back will be Markel Cartwright, also out of Andrews. Uh, some other local kids at the A&T team that will be playing tonight. you got a backup defensive end, Malik Hampton Prey. Luke, kind of neat for Malik Hampton Prey. They've got the Hampton as part of his hyphenated last name, and that's the team they're playing tonight. But he's six foot four, two fifty five 255 for Northern Guilford. Got some non-regulars. Didn't see these guys in a two-deep uh, depth chart, which I'm kind of happy the news record went all out today. They had a two-deep depth chart in the paper today, kind of a little fold section. Saw that today. Congrats to them for the good uh, publicity there. But, again, some other kids that are on the roster but maybe may not see a lot of time. But they're, they're working their way up. Guys like Ron Hunt, the wide receiver from Southern Guilford. Trey Purcell, who's been there for a while over at A&T. He's a linebacker from Northern Guilford. And Franklin McCain, the defensive back from Dudley. So a lot of local input on that Dudley team, from the Dudley team on the A&T team. And looking forward to seeing those guys maybe get a chance and get a shot. Oh, and, and why not? Uh, Dudley's got a very strong program down here in Greensboro. Uh, familiar with them from my time with Grimsley High School. Uh, coaching oh, yeah. with them with the JV squad and working a little bit with the varsity. Uh, seemingly every year they're, they're in the mix. Them and Paige go on after it for um, trying to trying to win conference. So uh, anytime you can get local guys as, as a program like a and that's something an institute really likes to, to showcase and, and get some of that top top homegrown talent to stay home and, and stay with their communities that they grew up in. And it, it really promotes the university very well as a recruiting tool. And you look at uh, Hampton, even a couple local guys on there. you got this kid, Desmond Sturdivan. He's a backup defensive end out of Smith High School. And he checks in six foot one. Weighs around 286. Saw him this summer. He was working over at the Harris Teeter on Lawndale. Good kid. The weird thing is about all those guys like Sturdivant, and we talked about uh, other kids, Ron Hunt. We talked about uh, Mar Renard. We talked about Mark All those kids pretty much sat where you're sitting at this show a few years ago when they're coming through high school. But a lot of kids in this game tonight have come through here before, which is also kind of neat as well. Oh, yeah. It, it, they kind of grew you, up around here. Yeah, for you, it's going to be a trip down uh, oh, yeah. memory lane almost. It's and good to see them. these guys advance and uh, progress and do well and get their name out there. That's the whole thing, get your name out because the lady just came through a little while ago, the Hooker kid out of Dudley. His mom through here, Wendy Hooker, grabbed some food. They're going to the game tonight. Alan Hooker, her husband, played at A&T back in the day. And i about Hendon. You know, for Hendon, he's going to Virginia Tech next year. He's already committed up there. But for Hendon, he's going to the next one. I want to see him play on Saturdays on TV. I want to see him play on Sundays, too. I hope he makes it to Sundays as well. Oh, yeah. And there's, I mean, we all, especially growing up around a lot of sports, we all know a lot of guys that we have high hopes for as friends. So, and to see them actually make those steps and reach those goals, it, it almost feels like you're doing that with them when you're yeah, close you, to you them. Yeah, you feel you got some personally. kind of connection, yeah. Yeah. And especially, it's in a lot of ways, it's like the community gets to go through it with them. Mm -hmm. And they get to experience it with them because there's such a good following among local talent, I feel. And especially anywhere in the South uh, when it comes to football. Um, there's always that local following. Um, for example, David Wilson in Danville, Virginia, and his trip to Virginia Tech and going uh, to the New York Giants before his horrific neck injury. I mean, that's a great homegrown story, uh, spending a lot of time in Danville myself and, and playing for a coach that, that coached him as a head coach at George Washington High School. He, he it was such a great homegrown story. Uh, and the community, uh, not all of them Giants fans, but when, when he was on the field, you were rooting for the best, nothing but the best for David Wilson. And that's that's, that's what we always look for when we, we do these local stories and we follow high school players through college and, and maybe even a draft process. It's always something to look forward to. Yeah, and if I'm thinking about our website is the way we work it here, and this worked pretty well the past couple of years, about 11 years now doing this. But anyway, we start with the guys, we cover the guys in middle school, then they go to JV. We got JV games around the area somewhat tonight, JV games, the high school games on Friday, then you got your college games on Saturday. And we got uh, four or five guys still playing in the pros on Sundays. You still got uh, Eric Ebron with the Detroit Lions yep. out of Smith. Still got uh, Marquis, uh, Marcus Gilcrest out of High Point Andrews. He's the Jets. Mm -hmm. And you still got David Amerson doing a good job for the Raiders out of Dudley. It was with the Redskins. Floyd with the Chargers, I believe. Michael Michael Floyd. Well, you got uh, you got uh, Keenan Allen with the Keenan Chargers. Allen. He got Keenan injured. Allen he got Chargers. knocked yes. out for yep, the year. Yeah, knee yeah, injury. Exactly. Right, yeah, yeah, got blown out. But and you got a kid, DJ Reader. DJ was here this past summer between uh, 
you know, college at Clemson when he graduated, going on to the Texas uh, Houston Texans. He was on TV, I guess, last week. He was up front with J.J. Uh, Watt and uh, Jadavian Clowney on the front line with those guys helping them out. Hey, that's not yeah. a bad place to be sitting, right? <laughs> I can't believe those guys got beat 27 to nothing. I mean, that defense that gave up 27. I thought the offense in Houston might do something last week. Gosh, that's crazy. Well, the then you got an NC State guy quarterback in the Patriots, so you never yep. usually see anybody get a chance. Uh, talked about it the other day with somebody. As soon as uh, Tom Brady comes back this next week, that's probably the last to see. Jacoby Brissett and Jimmy Garoppolo probably they're going to sit down for a long time. I would I would imagine the, mm -hmm. that Tom Brady guy is pretty good. Yeah. Um, uh, but another big Brissett, guy in this uh, game. Another local guy. Oh yeah, he State. Us, and a yeah. big time uh, fan of his, Bill Parcells. Mm -hmm. So that, that guy might know a little something about football too. Probably a little more than we can handle at yeah. one time. I'm sure yeah. if he came in, he probably wouldn't share one bit of. He probably just look look the other way, walk up, place his order, get his food, and go home. <laughs> but another kid in this game tonight. I'm not sure how much he'll play, but he's a grad student for Hampton. His name is Will Fox. Will's a big kid. He goes at six foot two, three oh two. He played at Page in high school, played some at Oak Ridge Military Academy back when they set a football team there. So you got Will Fox there, a chance maybe to play some football tonight for the Hampton Institute team. Will's just a good kid, local kid, played at East Carolina for a while, then he had some eligibility left, so he made the move up to Hampton, finished up his career up there. Well, anytime you got guys like graduate uh, students that are that are part of that join the program and, and put in that extra effort, not just on the field, to, to join a program uh, really mid-stride, but to put in that extra work in the classroom, that's something that the, the team rallies around and they very much respects. It's very much respected in the locker room. You can see the added stress. You can see how hard they work uh, in all facets of everyday life. If you can stretch your eligibility, if you can get an extra yeah. year in, I say go for it. If you've got a year left, which you may have a year left, I may have a year left, you never know when you might want to try to use that extra year. Try to get some more time in. I mean, why not? As long as if you can play, if you feel you can play the game, and, and not only that, but you can walk on and have an opportunity to get accepted into a program, I mean, why not if that's your dream? And, how long since you, you played the game? How long have you been out of it now? Uh, my my last season was in 2013. I, uh, got it's not too long training. ago. No, wow. and I believe I do still have a year somewhere, but mm. uh, I, I'm not. I'm not exploring those options. So, if the Greensboro anymore. College coach or the Guilford College coach came in tonight looking for a player, you wouldn't uh, maybe jump out there. Uh, not. I don't think a player can come back. I don't think he can come back. I think it'd probably take about a month well, of training. I think to get I'd, back into I'd it. lose a year of eligibility because if it was Greensboro, I'd be in the same conference. Mm -hmm. So they probably let you back in. It, well, they'd have to have uh, the master's program too that, yeah. that I could join because I already got my bachelor's. What so. about a double major? That's a, that's an interesting thought. I started that, that. We'll save that for another show. Though. Yeah, definitely. You, you were working on that one before anyway. So the A&T game tonight with Matt Johnson. He's going to be covering that game for us for GreensboroSports.com. He'll head that way in a few minutes, checking out the game tonight, and uh, talk with Matt about this game. Uh, so far this season, first game, A&T just rolled over St. Augustine's. I mean, they blew them out. It wasn't even a huge test. That was a big win. Offense, can they get it going like that, you think, tonight? Or maybe a different story against Hampton? I mean, I think it really relies on the offensive line. Uh, like we mentioned, and especially you mentioned with a run-heavy offense, can can they get a, a downhill focus going and get Tyra Cohen uh, comfortable and in a groove? Uh, and one of the one of the most important downs in football is going to be first, the first mm -hmm. down. Uh, if you can set up. A, a, a second and short, even a, a second and medium, second and five. Uh, you're in a much better position than a, a, just a short gain, a second and nine. It, it'll set up the rest of the rest of your sequence. It set up a short third down, and that's one of the biggest numbers in football, aside from turnovers, is your third down conversions. Can you set up third and short and be able to convert when you need to, uh, and, and keep rolling, get the points on the board. Uh, Don's going to probably pass our cards, and I think it might be our Southwest guys come in. Don will get those guys the cards. We'll start bringing those guys in as our second session go in about 6.30. Get the guys the meal cards. They'll be coming in after Matt's work is done. And uh, St. Augustine's game, what about the second game? That was the Kent State game. That might have been the uh, premier game, maybe one of the premier games in A&T football history. Oh, yeah. Lightning struck a couple times in that game, first to delay the game and then during the game with all the action that was yeah, going on. Yeah, because I tuned that game in. I was waiting for it to get started. It yes, was sir. a delay there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, once it got rolling, just nothing but exciting football. It looked like uh, Kent State was going to kind of solidify their position, kind of take control of the ball game. But really, uh, A&T battled. Uh, they were able to come uh, get it into overtime. That had to be tough to win that thing in overtime, oh, especially yeah. on the road, After to get that win and, and to get it with a big play, you know? Oh, yeah. And any time you get an overtime victory, uh, it's almost like a lift. But you, you do face the, the problem of, of a potential letdown the next week, which 
which is kind of what they saw against Tulsa. They saw probably a big difference maybe in talent level. I don't think people yeah, realize how I big a agree. difference talent level was going to be going from Kent State going to Tulsa. Just a huge difference in the level of talent there probably. Oh, yeah. And, and Tulsa is a, a very good offensive program, and, and they really kind of took advantage of the aerial attack against uh, A&T, a team that, that, that – that likes to grind their way to points. Uh, really, the high score, high scoring in Kent State against Kent State and Ohio, uh, uh, really not indicative of what this team really wants to do. Uh, like you, you said earlier in our program, running the football is their mo. They really want to control the tempo, control the time of possession, and give Tyrek Cohen his carries. Really give everybody their touches on the ground and get the big play through the running game. But when you get down, uh, I believe it was 21, uh, 28 nothing in the first quarter, that really limits your options and, and almost, it, you've the defense some, can be more aggressive than they some, originally some were. Some of your followers of the game, your listeners, your viewers, even some of your fans, and you hope not your players, sometimes they'll start letting off the gas and they kind of tuning things out and they almost start looking at we're down 20 nothing, no chance to come back. You don't want to get to that stage. you got to stay, try to stay in those games. And I think A&T finally posted how many points? What was the final again? Uh, they, I they, believe it was 58-24 to 24 uh, at the end of the game. They were down 58, score, 58 was, yeah, to nothing. When I heard that final score, yeah. I said, hey, you know, that's, uh, I get those 24 points. That's not mm -hmm. bad. I made some kind of statement in that game without walking away empty-handed made some kind of statement because you look at if you see like a 58 7 score you're yeah. saying Man, they never had a chance. They were, they were, but you get 58, 21, 24, you're making some kind of statement there. Uh, especially against an opponent that's FBS and you're an FCS school, it does make a difference in, in talent level, and uh, especially in scholarships and the talent you can bring in in recruiting. It makes a very big difference. And, and to put 24 up against, even if it's the, the, the second strings or the third strings, it doesn't matter. You're still putting points on a board on the road in Oklahoma against a, a very good program that's yeah, scored. Even Oklahoma, you, you're definitely in uh, big-time football country there. Oh, yeah, and that's I mean, they're that's players at Tulsa, Tulsa that uh, Oklahoma State and Oklahoma didn't take and guys that were kind of left behind in the recruiting process and those guys are probably mm -hmm. top tier recruits in some of our other states. And that's a program that's on the up and up as well. They scored over 50 against Virginia Tech in a bowl game last year. Uh, so that is uh, an offense that when they get rolling, they, they can really put some points on the board against a quality defense. It's been a strange college football year too because you look at yes, Appalachian sir. played Tennessee and barely lost in overtime on the ball that Tennessee recovered from the fumble to get the win. Then you take Tennessee going against Virginia Tech last week, and boy, Tennessee just, uh, or Tennessee against Virginia Tech, I guess that's the game Virginia Tech blew them away up at uh, what, Johnson City at Bristol, Tennessee at the big racetrack. Yep. And then you get a team like last week, Virginia Tech against East Carolina, and Virginia Tech just rolls over them. Then you get Tennessee later in the day, they're playing Florida, and they blow them out. I mean, it's, this thing's hard. Some days teams are in one MO, so the other days are in another MO. And, and that's why they play the game. Yeah, that makes <laughs> it crazy, yeah. The, you look I at think the some teams get up you try to make predictions. They get up different for different teams. I mean, a team like Tennessee and Florida, you have to beat Florida like X amount of years on a certain location. You're going, man, we got to beat these guys this year. And you, you did get focused like that for Appalachian. Now, I mean, and really, that's uh, look at years ago when Michigan played Appalachian State. Mm -hmm. uh, when when Appalachian State went into the big I think, house. I think and Michigan took, woke took, up oh, way yeah. too late that day. Uh, yeah. and, and, and ever since then, you still see it happening um, even with North Dakota State. Uh, that's an FCS oh, yeah. school yeah, taking on time. a 15th ranked in the country, Iowa, yeah. and knocking them off on the road. I mean, if you and, do. Isn't that where the guy if, Carson went? With uh, the, uh, the yeah, with the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles. He came out of there, didn't he? Yes, sir. He yeah, did. Yeah, that's a big time operation oh, there. Yeah, yeah uh, that's time. a very, very strong program. The Bison. Then you, you, you look at a team like Appalachian last week. They're playing against uh, Akron, playing the Zips. And Appalachian took Tennessee to the max. Tennessee just whipped up on Florida big time, just blew away Virginia Tech in that game. But you got Appalachian, just a one touchdown difference, and just beat uh, Akron by a TD. And that's how it still gets crazy. I mean, sometimes you play down to the level of your competition and play up against, you know. And that's, and that's really what you look for as the season goes on. Uh, a team really isn't what they're going to be in September. You look for late, especially in college football, late October, early November. That's when the team is what they are. Mm -hmm. and, and you head into that. That home stretch, and you have teams that they will play down to opponents. And some teams they could have a, a two and seven record, but they could play up to opponents. And that's when looking at things like point differential and and how a team plays on all three phases of the ball, uh, it makes a difference in trying to, at least in our business, try to make a prediction on who's going to take a victory. Here's your prediction. What do you what do you think about A and T's quarterback situation? What do you think that'll be like tonight? Well, there is the old adage: if you have two quarterbacks, you technically have no quarterbacks. But mm, interesting. I think that that that's 
that's not necessarily true in this case. Um, I really do. Again, I've been stressing the offensive line all evening here, but I do think this is a unit that can protect uh, whenever they need to throw the ball. If they get into some third and long situations, um, I, I look for that to be the difference. I, I think added pass protection there, and in the running game, they need, they have not just Tyreek Cohen, but they have a great host of running backs in the backfield. These quarterbacks can run the ball a little bit, uh, and look for the look for these, this front five to, to take control. If I'm with those running game. backs, I want to be in there when the game's on the line. I like to be in there maybe late in the game. If we got a big lead. That's nice. The score comes out. I don't want to be in there when the game's on the line and score my touchdowns or my touchdown then if I can. Oh yeah, and and there's nothing wrong with getting your carries if if you're up big too. I mean, uh, it's always a good feeling as long as the team gets the W. And, and really, I think that's what uh, Coach Broadway was stressing yeah. during the bye week. You have all this added time after a big loss to Tulsa, where you know I, they played pretty well in, in the end. Uh, a, a rough start against a very good Tulsa team. But what was the message to his team during the week? I'm sure it was get the W and and uh, worry about individuals later and worry about the team first and uh, try to take care of business and get that first conference victory. Here you go. What's the winning formula for A&T as far as the game goes tonight? Grind it out. I'd like to see Tyreek Cohen get, Cohen get 20 carries. Um, anytime you can get a, a premier back, his touches. Uh, I, and, and when I say t 20 carries, I really should say 20 touches. I'm saying at least uh, get him a couple carries, a couple receptions too. Get him his Certain chunk players yards. like him probably need an amount of touches, certain number of maybe 10 just to get warmed up. Oh, yeah. Just to get running with him. Uh, especially when you got a guy that, that not only runs the ball out of the backfield, catches a lot of swing passes. I believe he leads the team in receptions with 11. Um, not really a big number, but again, this is a run heavy offense. Look for him to split carries with the rest of his, his uh, backs in the backfield, but uh, to take advantage in open space. Uh, get out on swing passes, get out on anything in the flats, try to take advantage of his quickness and his good hands in, in open space. Matt Johnson with us. He'll be at the A&T game tonight for GrandSportsSports.com. And Matt, what about the uh, TV coverage tonight. It's going to be on TV. Does that hurt the home crowd any? Uh, I don't think so. I think it. I, I think it adds up. Uh, to more more publicity for the school, and you, you talk about A and T and what this program's done so far this year. Uh, you, you, no matter where you walk around in Greensboro, it seems like the the, the number of shirts and hats and and, and everything, uh, all the fans, they, they pop up. It's everywhere. on the increase. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely on the up and up. Coach Broadway has done a great job with this program, uh, and I look for that to to really help feed into a, a very strong home crowd, especially with homecoming coming up uh, next week. It definitely, I look for some hype into. How many into more? Program. Thursday night games they have. They've got some more this season, right? I believe it's next week, and that's it as far as Thursday night games at home. But more TV games, too? Um, I have not seen but that. But you said they've been on TV quite a bit already. Yeah, uh, the past uh, three games they've been on an ESPN U Network, I believe. Uh, definitely a, a nice spotlight for this program. Coach Broadway doing a good job promoting his program, trying to get some more recruits in here and still uh, get some local guys and get some more publicity and show that this program is going to be tough. Play. It's kind of interesting because you got like six local colleges around here. Oh, you look yeah. at the area, you look at Wake Forest, then you got uh, Winston Salem State, then you come over here, you got Greensboro, you got Guilford, you got AT. Then you got Elon. I mean, you got like six local teams just in this area alone. Oh yeah, and, and not even just in the, the Division One level. Yeah, you I got mean, like you Division got, One, Division Three. You got the uh, Division Two. Got them all, like you said. And, and even going a little further out, you got schools near Charlotte, uh, UNC Charlotte. You got schools kind of budding elsewhere. Um, but to keep it local, Elon, even the, to a, a, a lower level, uh, Guilford, Greensboro College. You got uh, Averett and Danville. That's right here by the border. And you got West Salem State. They got there. the yep. Division Two level there, and they recruit. Quite a bit of local guys. Oh yeah, it's a very strong football area, and it, I think it's a testament to the talent around here and the and the young talent that comes up through the high schools. I think it's a very strong testament to the coaching at the younger levels as well, uh, going from rec through high school, maybe even middle school ball. I didn't have middle school ball growing up in Massachusetts. Mm. I had to do privately. Wow. But, um, so you were in Massachusetts. Yes, sir. But all the way down to Avert, how'd that connection come together? Oh, it's a that's a long story, sir. Wow. But hey, it's a it was a great trip. And um, how'd know, they find was, out about you in Danville? How'd they find about a guy up in Massachusetts? Well, I was uh, planning on moving to the south anyway with my uh -huh. family. My right. parents were on the move, so We're I started move, yeah. uh, looking into the area. And uh, ahead, once yeah. I got uh, recruited by uh, Coach Coach Dunleavy, Mike Dunleavy, uh, when he was with his time at uh, Avery University. Um, and that was the football once, Mike Dunleavy, not the yes, basketball. Sir. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> uh, not the first person to say that. Yeah. But um, he, uh, once I got his pitch uh, in building a program like Avery, in trying to build a program like Avery, 
different and the guys that they already had there. All I needed was uh, Coach Dunleavy showing me the staff that he had, the team that he had already put together, and I was sold. And to, to be a part of a young program, um, a, a lot of young D3 and budding football programs, and to get an opportunity to try to try to write a history book uh, was all I needed to be sold. And I had my family, my parents coming down here uh, as it was, whether I stayed in Massachusetts. Now, did or, you finish up high school in Massachusetts? Just yes, came I did. College. Okay. Where, yeah. where did your family settle? Uh, Reedy Fork in Greensboro. Reedy Fork, out Highway 29. So yes, that's sir. not bad at all. Nice yeah. area. Not nice bad. Area. Matt, I know you got to get rolling. Yes, got to get down to the game. Appreciate you coming well, in to uh, Change Rib Shack, Football in Focus. Matt Johnson again with the Averett play by play. What's the play by play uh, address, web address to go to for your games? www.averettcougars.com. Uh, I go by Matt, the Dean of AU Sports Johnson. Uh, anything AU Sports, I'm more than happy to broadcast. Uh, as we do, I do basketball, I've done volleyball, men's and women's basketball, uh, football. We're uh, hopefully going to be doing baseball. Uh, we just got uh, the equipment for audio broadcast broadcast in there. Uh, brand new football stadium, uh, $6 million stadium, plus the field turf renovations from last year. A very young and uh, up and coming program up there in Averett and I'm very grateful for the opportunity from uh, Athletic Director uh, um, uh, Meg but uh, uh, and also uh, SID Drew Wilson and all his uh, communication staff that he has there in the Sports Information Department in, in Averett uh, University. Just, just a wonderful opportunity and a great program to check out uh, if you're interested in some quality D3, uh, D3 football. Uh, Averitt's got already played Guilford on the schedule. That game's up on YouTube if you want to check that out. Uh, and they actually have Greensboro College coming up on the schedule here soon. I believe that'll be uh, later in October. Um, so uh, some great local competition uh, all across the football spectrum. Matt, be safe. Enjoy the game Thank tonight you, and look forward to your report at the website. Thank you, sir. Matt Johnson, GreensboroSports.com, football and focus. James Rivshack for a Thursday. Matt's going to step out. We're going to get our guys from Southwest Guilford in. I think